But even the new lads like Piers have their feminine side. One in three men under 40 now use moisturiser every day. Last year, British men spent £65 million on skincare products. They also shelled out £920 million on personal hygiene and £88 million on fragrances. Androgyny is the prevailing fashion. Men are having facials while women are buying cars. What's really interesting about where feminism has taken culture is that women now have what they want. And typically, if something's missing. <laughs> what women want was total fairness, total equality. They wanted what men had. But they also wanted the classical man, whom they've destroyed. In place of the classical man, we now have the metrosexual man, preening, girly, and fashion conscious. Men's magazines reflect this growing trend. They're full of fashion advice and advertisements for moisturizers. GQ magazine is one of the best-selling men's fashion magazines aimed at the sophisticated man about town. To give me a profile of today's modern man, I went to meet its editor, Dylan Jones. Looking at your magazine, looking out of the window of your fashionable offices into the fashionable London Square outside, there seems to be a trend towards um, uh, the androgynous, uh, mannish women and, and girly boys. Do you think there's any, anything in that? I do actually, and I think that um, uh, the metrosexual man was, was very much a, a, a media construct, but I think pretty much it's true, it's a real demographic, and I think that men uh, in the city working in particular industries are probably more effeminate, and I think a lot of it's got to do with the way they consume, and actually men are far less sophisticated consumers than women are. Uh, and almost we've been, in, in our industry, we've been going through a process in the last 30 years of educating men to consume as women. And the big growth area now is in cosmetics and grooming, moisturizers and what have you. How would you describe metrosexual man? Um, a metrosexual man is a heterosexual man who has adopted various um, feminine traits. But as, okay. but, but as I said, it's mainly about shopping. <laughs> but what's driving it? I think that in this in the society we're in at the moment is that um, men make their marks in different ways and it's no longer just about the job you do, um, where you are in society. A lot of it's got to do with how you look, your behaviour, your attitude, and I think that um, men need to define themselves in different ways. And I think that um, one way they are doing that is by consumption. It's still uh, tied in with status, but it's a different kind of status. Where does all this leave traditional male virtues? I think traditional male virtues are kind of floundering as, as traditional men are. Um, you know, as, as, as the safety net of society was pulled away in the 80s, lots of men didn't know what to do. That's why it's a huge rise in violent crime and drugs, you know, they don't know what they're uh, meant to do anymore. Also, women have been encouraged to um, act like men. I mean, on a Friday night, you'll see women behaving in as a disreputable fashion as men once did, and still, still do. I mean, that whole notion of um, female rad culture and the kind of loutish behaviour, I think, is almost being encouraged. In broad brushstroke, women in society have much greater profile, um, more economic firepower, and, um, you know, they, um, they're taking over. In towns across the UK, it's now commonplace to see packs of ladettes drinking pints, mooning, fighting, throwing up. In fact, behaving as badly, or even worse, than their male counterparts, the lager lag. This bucket represents what you drank last night. It's still the weight of that. This is reconstituted what you drank. That's ridiculous. <laughs> This abrupt reversal of roles even extends to the mating game. It seems to be increasingly the norm that men are now the prey and women are the hunters.
women are much more predatory now. And they're predatory because they're sick of waiting for men to come and ask them out. In romance, someone must pursue. And to be pursued, you have to run away. <laughs> and unfortunately, um, a lot of women don't. A lot of women turn around and charge right back in. I mean, men are actually frightened by women being predators now. And you can't blame them. I mean, as a woman, I'm frightened. One of the problems of modern feminism is that its understanding of equality has been not what the early feminists would have understood to be equality at all. But as a result, I'm afraid women have increasingly taken on the more louche characteristics of the caricature male behavior. So while girls acquire masculine qualities, men are being told if you don't cry and whine and hand out your feelings to anyone who'll stop and listen, there's something wrong with you. We live in an age that demands emotional access. I think television and the rest of the media are driving this feminization. I think maybe you do need a little bit more cleavage. Look at the way we have so many lifestyle programs aimed at female audiences at the expense of current affairs and documentaries. And at how men are continually portrayed in adverts, drama and sitcoms as ineffectual, clueless, idiotic. Look, I'm uh, calling a meeting at four this afternoon, a sort of brainstorming. What, on a, on a Saturday? Yes, get your ass in here. I want to get cracking straight away. Martin Freeman's character Ed in the BBC series The Robinsons epitomises the downtrodden modern man. In virtually every scene, we see him completely at the mercy of sassy, stronger women. Shall I look at No. God, you really like living on the edge, don't you? Ed, I've had a meeting with Nigel. You are going to love this. I'm going to have to let you go. The feminization of the media is definitely reflected in our interest in opinion pieces rather than hard facts, in celebrity rather than something that actually has some substance. And I think we are suffering intellectually because of that. Newspapers, too, have become preoccupied with opinion and lifestyle at the expense of reporting. Emotion takes precedence over rationality. It's one small step for man, one Heroes are a useful barometer of society. They used to be soldiers, Battle of Britain pilots, polar explorers, lions of empire. Now it's David Beckham, wet, if not downright androgynous. I'm running out of hairstyles, I think, but uh, no, this one's just to keep my hair out in the eyes, so. The stars of today are more androgynous because they need to relate to both men and women. We want someone, you know, like Colin Farrell, perhaps, you know. He's slender, he can play bisexual roles, but he's a bit of a lad, so he really satisfies both camps. He's not particularly old-school masculine, though. He's not responsible, he's not married, and he doesn't care. So maybe that's the only role that masculinity has these days that we accept.